Hello. Good morning, everybody. I'm delighted to be here uh, at Wonka today. I feel very honored. And I really want to thank you, the organizers, for inviting me. Well, I'm, I'm working in Cochrane at the moment, and I've been in Cochrane for a few years, but for quite some time I work as a family doctor. And I would like to share with you some of the challenges I felt while working as a family doctor. I found it difficult to find a balance between life and work. I had a lot of paperwork. I felt time pressure. It was very difficult to keep up to date. At times I fell run down and burned out. I had questions with no answers. I found it difficult sometimes to understand patients' demands and patients' needs. And I felt that resources were short. I'm, I'm sure some of us, some of you, sorry, uh, also feel some of these challenges. But you are still required, obviously, to provide a quality, efficient, and equitable health care. And we've learned from Michael Kidd, you know, that you are dragons and you are supposed to, to, to keep doing your, your job in a very high standard. But uh, how can Cochrane help? Can we do... <coughs> apologies. Can, can we do anything to help you? I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about Cochrane and what we do and what we are. Cochrane is a global independent network. Um, it's a non-for-profit organization. We have lots of people working with us, more than 44,000 people from different backgrounds, both researchers, medical doctors, and people just interested in health. And what we do is to summarize the research and just to make help, to help you inform decision making. And we do systematic reviews and other synthesized evidence. And our work is recognized as a high standard and trusted information. We published the Cochrane Library. You probably have heard about the Cochrane Library. I'm just going to explain a little bit about the Cochrane Library, but at this stage I would like to tell you that the Cochrane Library is under undergoing a major, a major transformation at the moment. We are moving into a new platform to improve users' experience. So if you have access to the Cochrane Library at the moment, you'll see that there is the, the old version that's been there for quite some time, and also a Vita, a beta version that uh, some of these new features are in place, but not all of them. So it's good that you are aware that, you know, we are working on this and hopefully in a month's time uh, the, we'll launch the full new Cochrane Library. So there are several databases that you can find in the Cochrane Library. One of them is Cochrane Reviews. And obviously there you'll find Cochrane reviews and also protocols. Each Cochrane review needs to have a protocol to be published in advance explaining how this research is going to be done, how this Cochrane review is going to be performed. And also these Cochrane reviews are prepared by author teams working with Cochrane review groups and they are published when ready. Also, they form monthly issues that can be found in the Cochrane Library. And um, you can also find in the Cochrane Library editorials, supplements, and there you'll find the abstracts of the colloquium. Um, Cochrane runs a conference every single year, uh, which is called the, Co the Cochrane Colloquium. And all the abstracts of, of these conferences are in the sub published in, in, in these su supplements. And also in the supplements, there is a method journal which is published once a year with all the innovations in methods 
that have been going on in Cochrane during that year. Also, in, the, in this database, uh, you'll find a special collections. Those are collections of systematic reviews around a certain topic, we are, which are made free and available, uh, they are freely available. Another database you can find in the Cochrane Library is Central, which means the Cochrane Central Register of Control Trials. And then you'll find reports of randomized and quasi-randomized control trials. Uh, you'll find all the details about these trials, but there will be no abstract for most of it. In most cases, there are no, no abstracts. Um, those are the results of systematic searches being done by, by each Cochrane Review group. And they do these searches in, in, um, in big databases like Embase or PubMed. And, and then they report this, they, they put the, the summary, the reports of these randomized control trials. They publish them in Central once a month. And they are included irrespective of language or time of publication. So it's good to know that you'll, you'll get in Central the biggest source of, of reports of randomized control trials. Another database uh, I want to tell you about your finding Cochrane is Cochrane Clinical Answers. Probably this is going to be of interest to you because what we aim in Cochrane Clinical Answers is just to use the information in Cochrane reviews to make it available to use at the point of care. What we do is to provide, we summarize this information in a format answer, uh, question and answer with the data derived from Cochrane reviews. So this is actionable, actionable and very easy, very easy to use and accessible at the point of care. I'm just going to show you very quickly the format of Cochrane Clinical Answers. So this is an example of a Cochrane Clinical Answer. In this case, the question is, how does metformin compare with insulin in pregnant women with type 2 diabetes? And below this question, you'll get an answer, which is a summary of the data extracted from a Cochrane review. In this case, we have bolded the first paragraph because we felt that the answer was probably too long. And if you are in a rush and you need a quick answer to this question, just getting the bolded part of this summary, you'll get to know exactly what is the answer to that question. But if you want more details, just below exactly below this, this answer, you'll get the data that has been driven from the, the systematic review. So you'll get all the comparisons that have been included and for, it, com for each comparison, all the outcomes that have been assessed in this comparison. For each outcome, you have a, a quality of evidence summary, a narrative result, and a relative effect and also an absolute effect. Just this was the, a bit of the background I wanted to talk about in Cochrane, and now I'm going to move about talking about Cochrane and quality. Well, quality has, is one of the principles that has guided Cochrane for many years since its inception. We have 10 principles and quality is one of them, that one of the principles that has guided our work. And by quality, we mean that we want to produce really a high quality product, that we are open to criticism, and that we are keen to innovate all the time. Uh, we have a, uh, developed a Cochrane strategy for 20 to 20. And, and in this strategy, there are four goals. And goal number one is about producing evidence. So the aim is to produce high quality, um, relevant, and up-to-date synthesized information. 
Nevertheless, we are aware, we, we've been aware for quite some time that there were a few issues in Cochrane that had to be addressed in relation with the quality. Uh, we found that there were some inconsistencies in the quality of uh, con Cochrane reviews. We found all the in inconsistency in the way uh, the editorial processes were going on. Um, there were issues that had to be addressed, like prioritization. There was a need to decrease the time to publication because it, it did take a long time to produce a Cochrane review. And, and we had to consider methodological innovations. So this was, a, you know, some thoughts that we had, some discussions that we had over the last years that led us to a very big transformation in Cochrane with this, the, the structure and function transformation. It's been a completely um, important change in Cochrane over the last years that has led to the establishment of different networks. Before, all uh, Cochrane was, um, uh, there were very many Cochrane review groups that uh, dealt uh, deal with uh, different topics. They uh, still exist, but now they have been included in these networks. And the main function, the main function of, of these networks, the first point is just to address quality. This is the most important issue for, for the networks. And so what, um, what these networks need, need to ensure is that all reviews are produced according to our standards of quality. We, we develop these standards, what is called the methodological expectations of Cochrane intervention reviews, the MASIR standards. Those were developed a few years ago, and networks need to ensure that all reviews follow these standards. Also, there are other issues that, that networks need to address, like, uh, you know, the consistent, uh, being sure that there is a consistent editorial process. And there are also other issues related with scope and coverage, prioritization, support and training, and new types of reviews. Talking about quality and about these changes that have been going on over the last years, I, I must mention that there have been quite a few initiatives. One of them has been to pre-publish, uh, sorry, pre-screen all the reviews before publication. This has happened, for instance, last year, a total number of 184 reviews were screened and there were, if, they, if they needed changes, those changes were done before publication, so we ensured that these reviews fulfilled the standards and were of high quality. Also, um, we developed a screening guidance to make it easier to, to do this job. Another, we have also considered also during this, this last year, we have either updated or we have created um, editorial policies. Uh, so all of them, all that are mentioned here, peer review, rejection, etc. Those have been dealt with over the last year. Also, there have been many changes in methods in Cochrane. There is a new body, which is a scientific committee which takes care and ensures that all the innovations that are required in methods are taking place. And for this reason, some funds, some methods, innovations, and strategic methods funds have been developed to ensure that we are approaching this issue, that we are uh, tackling this issue of innovation in methods. And there are also other, other things that have been considered to ensure the quality. Another one that I need to mention is the new technology workflow. Um, we have, an, an, our, um, we have uh, the Redman, our software to prepare Cochrane reviews, is going to be um, available online and will be a tool where other integrated uh, softwares will work together, like 
great and also like Covidence, which is an author support tool uh, to produce systematic reviews. Right, I'm just going to talk about Cochrane and efficiency now. Efficiency is also part of our Cochrane 2 strategy 20 to 20, in, number, in gold number four, it's building an effective and sustainable organization. Our aim is to increase efficiency and achieve sustainability. But if we need to talk about efficiency in Cochrane, we need to talk about Archie Cochrane. He was the man, he is the man behind our name. He was a British physician, he was well known during his time. And you know, one of the criticisms he made to the medical profession at that time, he said, how come we don't have summaries from all the randomized controlled trials in, a speci in a specific areas, and how come these summaries are not kept up to date? That would be an extraordinary source of information for doctors working in a, in a certain area. So we have followed his advice. He actually, his thought actually led to the development of the Cochrane collaboration in, in 1993. So we've been following his ideas and we do have these summaries. Um, we do have very many systematic Cochrane reviews. By the end of 2017, we had 7,510 Cochrane reviews published in the Cochrane Library. And there is a Cochrane Library, as you said, and a new Cochrane Library, as I mentioned before, is going to be ready in a few weeks. Uh, with new features, you'll be able to do different advanced searches, different from the ones you did before. It will be easier, easier to use. But I wonder, are we doing enough? Are you helping you to make best use of resources? We do have lots and lots of systematic reviews, as I said, but we are aware that probably this is not enough. We are aware that there are some challenges for us that we've been thinking on. The world is moving very quickly and you need answers very, very quickly. You cannot wait for the production of a Cochrane review. You need answers very, very fast. There are issues that we need to address, very important issues, like over-diagnosis, over-treatment. The world is changing, and, and we need to support more complex and versatile evidence. We need to move beyond randomized control trial. We need to also consider personalized precision medicine. So there are some things that we need to work on. And we have started so far. We've been working and we developed a, a knowledge translation strategy that was approved in February last year, April last year. So we put the, at the heart of Cochrane activities, we put these knowledge translation activities. And, and the aim is really to disseminate and to use and get impact of Cochrane evidence. Obviously, you are one of all our key audiences. And another response that Cochrane has taken is the new Cochrane, the new content strategy. This is something we are working on at the moment, but we need our aim is to ask the right questions, get the right, the right data, at, at the right format at the right time. And this must be driven by your needs. So thinking about the future, how Cochrane content will be in the future? Well, the answer is that we don't know, but we are certain that it has to be useful for you. So it, it has to be based on your needs. So we need you. And at this stage, I would like just to, to let you know that this afternoon, uh, David Toby, who is the, the editor-in-chief of the Cochrane Library, and myself, are going to run a workshop about, about this. And it would, be, it would be great to have you around and 
and to get your ideas about what you need. This is a dialogue that we are just starting, but we need to keep going. And just to finalize, I'm going to talk about Cochrane and equity. In, in there is goal number two in our Cochrane uh, strategy 20 to 20, and so we want to make our evidence available to everybody everywhere in the world. That's a map at the end of uh, 2016, 2.2 billion people had access to the Cochrane Library, and that was possible either by subscription or free or by national uh, provisions. From February 2013, we took some initiatives. One of them was to make um, reviews open access, a straight away gold open access. So if you want to publish a Cochrane review, a straight away you need to pay a fee and this is made available to the in the Cochrane Library straight away. Also, all the reviews are made free a year after publication. And this is our web page, this is Cochrane.org. Where, uh, where our evidence, our plain language summaries from Cochrane reviews are, are published. So this has been translated so far, uh, it has been translated to 15 languages. One of them is Polish. I think we are in the right place to let you know. So we have a strong, you know, an increased use in Cochrane evidence. Um, the end of last year, more four and a half million people were accessing Cochrane evidence. And just to finalize, I just want to talk very briefly about the Cochrane Equity Group. This group has the aim to encourage authors to report effects of the intervention on the disadvantage and also the effects on interventions and, uh, and regard, with regards to the ability to reduce inequalities in health. So they produce one of the most important publications, they produce a PRISMA guideline with a focus on equity, I'm sorry, the PRISMA report, uh, which had been published before, but now they, they, they made an extension with a, a focus on health equity. And they also provide a, a Prisma checklist, so it, it was easy, it's easier for authors to follow these guidelines. And also they have a, an equity checklist for systematic review authors. And just to mention our Cochrane Handbook of Interventions, this is all uh, our handbook uh, with detailed information about how to develop a Cochrane review. This is going, to, this is going uh, to be updated at the moment and there will be a chapter about equity. So just to conclude, I just want to say that Cochrane, we aim to provide accessible, high quality, and trusted information. We are aware that there are challenges ahead that we need to address. We need to address your users' needs, and you need to provide you the right data in the right format and at the right time. But for sure, what's for me the most important thing that I think we need to conclude is to say that we need to work together so we can help you that you achieve quality, efficiency, and equity in family medicine. Thanks very much for your attention. Thank you, Sarah.